When dealing with a falsehood, you're faced with two options. You can accept it or you can reject it. The basis upon which we take one of these actions is a product of our critical thinking capabilities and a desire to know what is true instead of confirming our bias. A lie can travel halfway around the world while the truth is still putting on its shoes. On Brainstorm, we choose the hard truths over the comforting lies. Reason, compassion, skepticism. This is the Brainstorm Podcast. To those listening live or to our patrons, welcome back. For those listening weekly, welcome to the Shift to Reason Radio, the brainstorm production where we take current events and important skeptical topics and try to analyze them critically. Remember that we're live on brainstormradio.net every second Friday, and today is April 13th, 2018. I'm Corey, and I'm still joined by Angela. Hello. Brandon. Yeah, hello. Lisa. Hello. Renee. Hello. And of course, the always amazing Dave. Also, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> nice. Whoa. Also, hello. That was amazing. I think that hello was my sexiest hello. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's jump right into our fuck you segment. Still waiting on that heifer, Julio. <laughs> fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. You're cool, and fuck you, I'm out. All right, Brandon, what do you got? You know, sometimes I feel bad when media outlets get sued. (laughs) This is not one of those times. This is not one of those times. Headline is, man sues InfoWars for spreading rumor he was the Parkland shooter. Now, there's a whole, there's a whole, like, scattershot we go into with various uh, mass violence conspiracy theories like we were talking about. But that's not my story. Uh, Marcel Fontaine is a... <coughs> excuse me. He's a man from New York who... <coughs> he has a picture. He has pictures on uh, online just like all of us do. The pictures he has online happen to be of him in various garb. And the InfoWars people have seized on this to be like, (sighs) to follow up the conspiracy theory that the Parkland shooter was not, (sighs) I'm sorry, I can't remember his name right now, the actual, the actual person who committed the crime, but instead it's Mr. Fontaine, who is basically being shot upon for being associated with it by Alex Jones. Okay. Yeah. In retaliation, he's suing InfoWars. Mm Mm-hmm. For defamation. Okay. And yeah, so he's falling through with it. This is tying into like the same sort of fantastical way that Alex Jones approached a lot Space. of media news stories. He <laughs> he takes and runs with things far worse than they should be. And I don't know how many times Alex has been sued for stuff like this, but this, this is one of the first ones I've heard of. He just picks targets that don't really retaliate. They don't. They consider them beneath notice. It seems right now. Somebody's now somebody's actually suing him, and he may actually face consequences for this. Good. Hopefully, there was something a little while back where he was. Uh, what was it? He was he was attacking uh, um, some company. It said that their food did a thing. Uh, Chicani or something. Right. Like that. It was a yogurt company. Right. Yeah, Ch- that's right. Was it Chobani? Yeah, that's, 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 that's the yeah. proper name. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they were they sent him a cease and desist, and he backed the fuck off pretty quick. But nice. yeah, I can't remember <laughs> what the conspiracy theory, but it was something along the lines of they were because he was uh, started by an immigrant, and then he's bringing in all these immigrants, and you know, right, right. Standard Alex Jones bullshit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I rewatched the uh, montage of somebody had turned his rants into an indie rock song. Oh, nice. <sighs> I watched that again and <laughs> it made me happy. <laughs> I but, almost want to start doing an audio segment where we like go through the odd 
uh, <laughs> Alex Jones specifics. video or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, the, the forever, I don't want them turning the frogs gay. That's right. <laughs> There's another great uh, <laughs> compilation of him just screaming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that one's great, too. And then apologizing for it. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Sorry. Yeah. I ate chili this morning. That was an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Uh, summer, summer you're being Alex Jones' spineless if you actually get your hands on him sort of thing. So what? where is this lawsuit in, uh, in the process? Is it just started? It's just started. Okay. He's... <laughs> The, unfortunately, the thing is that Alex Jones and Infowars have pretty shitty sourcing to begin with. One of the photos associated with this is actually off of a, I want to say, Pokemon image image board. Okay. Yeah. It's like some 4chan thing. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. So, you know, totally reliable. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, they totally fact check that stuff. Mm-hmm. Some of it's been edited. And one of the shirts in question, I wanted to make light of this, it's a, essentially a meme shirt. It's the... Four famous founders of communism drinking and having fun, i.e. Communist Party. And this, of course, makes him a communist. Because, of course, it does. <laughs> right. Right. Because that must make him a communist. Yeah, a shirt makes you a thing. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> for all you, for all I you swear guys. to God, conservatives being anti-communist makes me want to wear all the communist shirts. <laughs> Kinda, yeah. It's like, come, come on, fight me. <laughs> yeah, like he's. Uh, I want a special note. Is I know this from a different case. Alex Jones has been personally sued for family issues, and he has testified in court that he is an actor. Right. Yeah. That he, that he is a. He is essentially playing a character on fictional radio. I just heard an interview on uh, Polite Conversations with Ina with his ex-wife. Mm-hmm. And she said that he absolutely is not acting. And that was a big fat lie. <laughs> really? <laughs> he he is a fucking lunatic who believes all the things that he says. That must have been an sure interesting which, conversation. It was a very interesting Yeah, I'm not sure which is worse. Mm. Although to be fair, somebody's ex-wife is not exactly usually the not most the, not the least well, biased source. Not the least biased source, but possibly a reliable source. Of you know <laughs> what I mean for what somebody truly thinks. Yeah. However, difficult to. There might be a little bit of bias like, there. You know who we should interview on this show? Corey's ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> is Corey sure. going to be here that night? <laughs> yep. I don't think she'd actually come on. I don't think she'd agree to that. I think that. if one ex gets interviewed, then everybody else has yeah. to. Yeah. Oh, that have is to not nice to you guys. Take some out of my closet. <laughs> Everybody's ex gets interviewed yeah. on the yeah. show. You get an ex and you get an ex. Everybody gets an ex. <laughs> you, you know what would be awkward is that one of mine would just be Gumby's wife. So. <laughs> She is so nice. I love, oh, uh, I love that woman. Yeah, when did this become good. Jerry Springer? <laughs> yeah. It's not paternity tests, though. No, that's Maury Povich. Uh, uh. Same shit, different pile. So less chairs throwing. Yes. Yes, a but, lot less. So. Alex Jones is getting sued. I personally hope it, it goes in the in the plaintiff's favor. Right. Because Infowars is essentially a sack of shit dressed up like news. Yes. And it's not even well dressed as news. It's just no. it's just an umbrella for multi level marketing. Well not even multi level marketing. It's just selling bullshit to vulnerable well, people. Not entirely just bullshit though. It does have a he does have a very extensive line of like survival esque crap. John Oliver made extensive use of the fact that he sells taint wipes. Yes. <laughs> he? His, yes. million, his yes. million dollar taint wipes. Yeah, yes. John Oliver. One of the, one of the great things about their brain force plus drug or whatever is that uh, Paul Joseph Watson did a whole video on soy feminizing men and how feminist men are all soy boys and yes. whatnot. But there's soy in the brain force plus pills. Of course there is. <laughs> So even if it had that effect, then they're doing that to themselves. Yes. <laughs> You're buying this. Oh. Ah. I was like, they even fooled me. This yeah. Is jokes uh, on you. Of course, soy doesn't have that effect. But. Yeah. 
Whatever. It, it would be so bad too if that happened. I mean, I, it'd, be, mm-hmm. it'd be terrible if that cape became right, more feminine. Yeah. <laughs> it'd be a bad thing. That yeah. that uh, that is the general uh, idea of on the, <laughs> that show of uh, Paul Joseph Watson for sure. Yeah. And you won't want to fight in our wars. Wait a second, is this an anti marijuana ad? <laughs> Being feminine is bad. That's the message. Yes. Can't yes. have two yes. women working on the same shift. Because <laughs> oh, when wow. their periods are gonna line up. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have seen it, just yeah, that reminded me of it. There's a there's a like a Facebook poster who keeps sharing these they're phrased like like classical anti-feminine statements. The man who has it all. Yeah. Yes. It's just. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Flipped. I love the man who loves it has it all. Yeah. <laughs> He's amazing. You know, he actually manages to balance uh, working, uh, taking care of his kids, <laughs> doing the dishes, and keeping that healthy glow. All at the same time. Oh, he's and a breeder. A page. He's a breeder. He is a breeder. <laughs> he's no. a breeder. Oh. Okay. Tough guy. Uh. So, so you, you don't have a problem with his cum like you did the other. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you talking to? <laughs> was, 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 there, was there something earlier? Both to... Yes. Yes. <laughs> I think we've talked about cum and pop. We did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember which Probably. So how, do we, how do we reverse that narrative? There, there's far too much. There's far too much talk about expulsions. We're yeah, getting, which, which we're getting Lisa confused. About? Yeah, I'm confused. No. <laughs> yeah. He, reference yeah. one, two, yeah, three, which or one? four. He's frigid and he always has a headache. And yeah. So. Yeah, and he doesn't mind, mind if you like. Like, of course, he knows that male lady refers to like a male or female. You know, person delivering mail. He's just you know, he just <laughs> right. mail okay lady that. encompasses everyone. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's genius. It's like the it's fucking genius. <laughs> kind of the opposite of Alex Jones. <laughs> Yes, yeah, for sure. Totally. Yeah. Just, it's probably the biggest sure. compliment you could give any Facebook page ever. Yes. Yeah. I've seen them just as I'm scrolling by. Sometimes it's like I go and I think, wait a second, was that one of those? Let's start back up. It's fun. I think I've heard that before in the different version. It's like that. You I maybe. officially like too many pages and f- have too many Facebook friends. <laughs> How many do you have right now? Facebook friends? Yeah. 1150. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Dear God, you're almost becoming Taylor Swift. <laughs> Very close. Not you need, you even need close. more. You need not, more. Not even close. Most of the successful people I know have at least four thousand. So yeah, that's gotta, right. Most of the yeah. <laughs> most of the big names in uh, skeptical circles are maxed out. Exactly. Right. So they have so five thousand. That's got to be your yeah, goal. That's got to be the goal. Hey, here's a quote from John, age thirty six, who's a busy dad. My <laughs> wife is actually really good. She even irons her own tops. She does the dishes once in a while, too. Hey, all men, did you know that an hour spent cleaning the bathroom burns 71 calories? Be thinner, stay inside, be quiet, and don't forget to smile. It goes on. It's It's such good shit, man. It's It's so... Okay, so last one. It's not right that my husband should do all the cleaning, so I pay for a a cleaning gentleman to do it for him. (laughs) That's right. Cleaning gentleman. (laughs) (laughs) Cleaning gentlemen. <laughs> you know, until you reverse the gender, you don't realize how absurd the all, like so much so many assumptions in our mm-hmm. yeah for sure. Totally. The uh, there there is, however, that kilt based cleaning service around town. I'm for yeah. that. <laughs> I was I wasn't sure until I saw like a lot of the signs that it wasn't just a joke in my neighborhood. It's a thing. Yeah, but Fair they enough. wear stuff underneath. <laughs> She checked. <laughs> Angela knows. Okay. Have Angela. it on good authority that there's. They've got at least boxer briefs underneath there. Good authority. <laughs> they mentioned it on their their Facebook page. You. <laughs> that was where all the down votes to their Facebook page went. Yeah. yeah. What? <laughs> this is oh. bullshit. <laughs> no, true, no true Scotsman. <laughs> that's, right. that's not true. In, in, in uh, tradition is that if there's a queen on the throne, you wear something underneath. Huh. It's a decency if the thing. queen is on the throne. Yep. If it was king, there would no, be, in the so end, much. it would be, yeah, commando. Isn't I remember that like, sexist? Yes. 
Scotland. Treat, treat women the yes. same as men. Damn it. So, <laughs> whatever, whatever gets it on on clothes, Scott underneath the kilt. Yeah. All right. Are Let's you- move on to Renee's story before we keep going. <laughs> we could devolve further. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. How, this is no. This is not you don't want to. This is not going to be a good devolving. Um, well, it's kind of connected to that. Is that um, this guy is worse than Alex Jones? With you believe it or not, uh, I what? don't. I don't. Tell me how. Okay. Tell me more. There's apparently a guy who goes by the name of Side Thorn, which is probably a thorn in the side. How witty! And the conspiracy <laughs> granny. And apparently, what they in this video from Vice, um, what they did. It, it's a six minute video <laughs> where they. Literally, they went to the southern the Sutherland Church shooting or the site of the Sutherland Church. Shooting. I want to say Southland. Uh, is no. it Southland or Sutherland? Oh, anyway, the, the the shooting, the mass shooting, shooting in down Florida. in Texas, Texas, Texas. Yeah. Okay. Where uh, basically uh, the guy went in, just lit up the place, and everyone from four year olds to grandmothers were taken right. Out. It was at a uh, church. It was at a church. Yes, that's right. And um, apparently one of the kids that died was actually the pastor's 14-year-old daughter. And anyway, this guy who doesn't believe any of these mass shootings are real, he thinks they're all false flags, and he it's all a conspiracy, none of it happened. He actually he claims that he has a $100,000 reward if anyone can prove any of these mass shootings actually happened. He, he, you know, give him a death certificate, a birth certificate, whatever. It's all, you know, if you can prove it, he'll give him a hundred thousand dollars. It's all bullshit. But he actually went to the church and confronted the the pastor, and it was like all filmed on for, for Vice, and they were they were quite, you know, it started off very, you know, they're like, oh yeah, this is bullshit. See, there's no bullet holes, you know, it's all <laughs> bullshit. There, there's like a. a uh, like a sign in front of the church where everyone has signed, you know, condolences and stuff like that. Uh, this side thorn went and, you know, the truth will set you free. And then there was a confrontation with the pastor. And it was like, at first he was shaking his hand and kind of talking to him. And then it just devolved. It just devolved. You know, you know, there's no one died. You, you know, you're saying my daughter didn't die. No, she didn't die. She didn't even exist. You can't even prove she existed. Wow. And it just devolved into this. And how hurtful! Like just, yeah, just like the worst. Like this is that is the worst. And they showed a guy that goes around debunking a lot of these false flag mm. conspiracy theorists. Mm. And he's saying like, with with this stuff, seem seemingly is um, escalating to the point where eventually one of these people are going to. I don't know, snap, <laughs> you know, yeah. like it's, they're going to say it's such a fall. This is false. No one died. And they're going to go there with a gun and start shooting up the place. You know, like it's kind of, he didn't out and out say that, but he kind of hinted that way. And interesting. And like, if you go to this guy's website, like he's got a list of, you know, these are all, um, Columbine you know, didn't happen. I, I, you know, I'd have to look at the list again, but it was like, basically it Anything in the last, say, 10, 15 years, like pretty much any any mass shooting since 9-11, it's all bullshit. It's all a PSYOP. It's all, it's all a FEMA um, capstone or a UN, you know, thing. And, you know, a lot of collaboration there. Oh, yeah, there's a lot. Like, it's all, it's all, it's, <laughs> it's all FBI, <laughs> CIA, and a, and a military. And a mili- FEMA and a military – oh, I can't remember the term he keeps using because I watch a couple of this guy's videos. It's where they do fake – it's for training where they use fake blood and guts to kind of okay. desensitize your soldiers and mm. – you know, and, Ex- uh, Military exercise. Military exercise. And it was all – fight. it's all crisis actors. And, you know, and of course he keeps saying, I'll give you $100,000 if you can prove it. Well, the problem is you know damn well if they go, well, here's their fucking death certificate. Oh, you faked that. <laughs> yeah. know, like, exactly what would happen. He's moving the goalposts constantly. He's yeah. not going to lay out what would constitute proof beforehand. And and of course they, of course the guy the the pastor was just like, okay, I because the way trespassing laws work apparently in Texas is he had to physically 
ask the guy to leave. And, and it seemed like he was surprised when the pastor showed up. And so he's like, okay, now you're here. Now I'm going to have to ask you to leave. And then, oh, you know, fuck you, Frank. You're a demon, blah, 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 blah. And then they, someone called the cops. The cops showed up and why, why are you arresting us? Well, trespassing, <laughs> asshole. Yeah, like, well. And, and then, and you know, and it was, it's just, it was just one of those things where when I was watching it, I'm just like, Wow, fuck these guys. Like at one point I used to listen to like saying Alex Jones because yeah. I thought it was funny. And then all of a sudden I stopped listening because I realized people that listen to him are crazier than he is. Yeah, yeah. they take that shit very seriously. And this yeah. guy, oh, I would argue, is even crazier than Alex Jones because he thinks Alex Jones is on the government take. That's wild. You know, and I like see them getting a fight. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to happen. But he, he, Alex he Jones is friendly with the head of the American government. Yeah, that's true. He is kind of friendly with the president right now. Well, that, yeah, there is that. But See, like, it, it's all coming together. He yeah. hasn't even said anything about the border guards that are lining up on the border now when they're talking about the ball and my, all this shit. No, well, why? He, he doesn't want the Mexicans <laughs> here either. So, like, that's but. It was this case of I saw this. I'm like, holy yeah. fuck! Like, there's like these people actually exist, and they're starting to go to this level. Like, it was these guys have got their shit booted off YouTube. Like, they they had a YouTube page, and you can't find their videos on YouTube anymore. Oh wow! Not just demonetized, booted right the fuck off YouTube. Oh, wow. <laughs> so that just shows you how vile some of this stuff yeah, has got sure. has got to be. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, like, like you got to be really fucking toxic and nasty to get kicked off of YouTube. Yeah, I like, mean, they, they, entirely. <laughs> yeah, you can't, yeah, you can't find his stuff on YouTube. Like, they, you have to go to his website, which is then a sub site of like 153 News or something. And of course, they call themselves truthers and journalists and whatever. And yeah. Not and like, a I, journalist. Yeah, the one, the one video I watched was him commenting like he was. I couldn't quite tell what the way the video was, whether the, he was commenting that he was at the scene or whether he was commenting on someone of the video of someone who was taken at the, the the Vegas shooting. And he's just like, oh, yeah, see, the cops already had the place already pre-cordoned off. So, you know, it's a false flag. Blah. It's like it's an no, event. You no, cordoned off the area. <laughs> no, you dumb fuck. <laughs> it, was a, it was an outdoor concert in the middle of Vegas. Of course they're going to have cops out there controlling the the flow of traffic. What? <laughs> you know, it's like, you dumb fuck. But Apparently Jason Aldean's a liar. Yeah, apparently. Well, they're all in on it. It yeah. was all a psyop operation and blah, 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 blah. But just the fact that this guy could stand and look in this guy straight in his face and tell him, no, fuck you, your daughter didn't die. She didn't, even exist. Exist. she didn't even exist. I can't even, like, the hurt as a parent. Like, that's that's worse than Alex Jones <laughs> telling uh, the Sandy Hook parents. Um, or do you just, yeah. that was, do you just feel happen. really sorry for that guy? Yeah, cause, <laughs> because he's so fucking deluded that he would just say to the person whose child was killed, they didn't. Well, even I, 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 save, I save my sympathy for the grieving father. The, this is the point yeah. where I think yeah. my empathy is like, no, fuck that guy. Because like, I mean, totally. there's, a, there's, a, there's a point where it's like, you know what? You can believe that the government is corrupt and crazy. You know, there's evidence to that. But yeah. to think that they're going that <laughs> the but government to that extent, though, <laughs> yeah. corruption is not the same thing no. as um, yeah. conspiracy. Yeah, right? but to like to not even close to orchestrate this false flag narrative and blah blah blah. Why? 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 If the government's going to actually take your guns, do you know what it's called? A vote in Congress. <laughs> you know, like they're not. Well, and that's, they don't have to organize this shit. They're clinging to an uh, a really outlandish possibility because because the truth is that much scarier. Yeah, it's so much more. But the, the world in, is chaos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. shit happens. Yeah, but it, it's uh, can't with control these, it. with these exactly. conspiracy theory these nuts. It's weird. Is that they're Patriots and they, you know, blah, blah, like every, there's fucking on his website, there's American flags fucking everywhere. But yet, they're having sex or just, and yeah. I, that's actually, I started picturing how <laughs> it would look American if American flags, flags were fucking. And they're just like, like, yeah, they're waving in the breeze. Really, it's, it's called a country music festival. That's what it looks like. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Is there, is there like, <laughs> 
See, oh, God. now I like no, there's, there's, music. There's fireworks and everything. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so does Brandon. Brandon camouflage. Oh yeah, it's true. Yeah. We aren't the only two humans in the universe who like country music. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. But at any rate, <laughs> this guy's an <laughs> asshole. So is conspiracy granny next. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> well summarized. That was that was good. Let's go into the woo report. I'm not a scientist, but if I can tell you your science sucks, your science really sucks. That just makes no fucking sense. I mean, it's just bullshit. Fuck. That means you, Lisa. Is it me? Okay. Yeah, that's you. <laughs> I was like, oh, I was fuck. Like, I was like, what happened? Did the show end? I need <laughs> Corey walked out. He's I, fucking done. I need done. Corey to tell me when to do things. Okay. <laughs> I read this story way before the podcast and I was super prepared for it. Yeah. Yes, you so, were. You read your you. news story before it was cool. Yeah. So it's on uh, Jen Gunter's um, blog. So we love Jen Gunter. She is a yes. gynecologist and a medical bullshit uh, <laughs> debunker. Yes. So this is an article called The New Quote Study on Medical Abortion Reversal is Total BS. Here's Why. So there is a new study on, quote, abortion pill reversal, quote, unquote, and it is bullshit. It's a terrible study, but as it advances a forced birth agenda, we can expect forced birth politicians to salivate and cackle and use it to brew more laws that amount to experimenting on women. So I think it's, first of all, very interesting. I've never heard um, pro-lifers called forced birth. I like that. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting <laughs> sort of term. I like that flip of the words. I think it yeah. illustrates birth. what they want. Right. No choice. You got to give birth anyways um it's more it's more it's better than pro birth because forced birth is more there's more well it just it just sinister. emphasizes that the choice is not the woman's it's exactly it, you are forced to give birth okay. yeah so jen's pissed off because um she ha- there's a website called MedPage that is a real website that shows real medical articles on it um, and so she doesn't know why a real medical site would report on such a low quality piece of drivel. So, um, MedPage made sure the quotes from the horrible people at the American Association of Pro-Life Obstetricians and Gynecologists who make it their business to spread lies about abortion and to report women with miscarriages for suspected murder were up front. And the quote from ACOG, whose business is to spread facts about abortion, is buried at the end. So... So she's mad at MedPage. So you have this study, quote unquote, in a <laughs> it's a journal, but she calls it an anti-abortion shit aggregator <laughs> instead of a journal <laughs> called nice. Issues in Law and Medicine. So um, it's a hate journal that exists solely to publish shitty studies to advance extreme right conservative agendas. So like, she kind of gives some example articles they published in the past. Um, I don't know. Anyway, I, won't, I won't even list them off, but they, they basically are a, um, whatever, a, 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 a not a real journal that's just looking to advance certain policy and okay. not real scientific uh, results. Okay. Um, they also published uh, the American College of Pediatricians, who apparently are also um, a hate group of pediatricians with articles like uh, Abortion Breast Cancer Link, Review of Evidence from Asia, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so um, the apparently issues in law and medicine, this fake journal, is actually indexed in the National Library of Medicine, um, which makes it seem respectable. Um, she thinks that it shouldn't be in there. But anyway, so back to this actual study. It's called, quote, a case study, sorry, a case series detailing the successful reversal of the effects of MIF- Mifepristone using progesterone and claims a 64% success rate in reversing the medical abortion regimen when given after the first part of the regimen, the oral medication Mifepristone. 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 Thank you. Um, so just, just, You're welcome. Uh, thank you, self, for figuring out how to say that. You Fuck y'all. <laughs> <laughs> So apparently, and I don't, I have no idea about that. Um, it, it's, you can, if, if, if one is pregnant, uh, and one wants to have an abortion, uh, one can take two different medications. The first one you take is called, um, myth, God, fuck, 
Miss Pristone. <laughs> um, and then you have to take the a second drug uh, a few weeks later. So what this study basically did was to take women and give – so women who had already taken the Miss Pristone – um, and then they decided, oh, actually, I don't want to have an abortion. They've gone to these doctors and they've given them um, something else, progesterone. Um, and then that's supposed to quote, possibly reverse the um, the effects of the first medication. Right. Because you need to take the second one a few weeks later. Anyways, okay. Supposedly. So, yeah. They don't, of course, take the second one. Anyways, so basically – what. what <laughs> First of all, the authors used data from women from the United States and, quote, several other countries who called a, quote, informational hotline about abortion reversal. We are not told which are the countries. Um, this is the thing she really has a problem with. Um, they didn't – the patients in the study did not consent to being in the study. Oh. oh. They decided that they had an internal uh, review board waiver from requiring the, the women to participate in the study. So the women consented to taking the drug, which is you, any medical procedure, especially a major one, you would commonly get patients to sign a written consent that, yes, they agree to this treatment, yes. which is not at all the same thing as consenting to be in a study. Right. So that this is Yeesh. the thing she really has a hard time with with this. Um now, after hearing so after hearing some kind of information which is not detailed in the paper, but um, but I am sure is totally facts based inside yeah. sarcasm <laughs> inside sarcasm emoji, uh, the women who chose to proceed were referred to quote physicians and mid level practitioners for treatment. So the women apparently gave written informed consent for treatment, but again did not uh, sign. They, they were not told they were going to be in a study, and they did not because the study the these, quote, researchers decided they had a waiver on this. Um, hmm. So an IRB waiver also generally means that um, there is minimal risk. But since this is an experimental drug on a vulnerable population, pregnant women and fetuses are considered a vulnerable research population, um, it doesn't make any sense that, right. that they would be given this, that, that they would have a... Um, that they would be given a waiver on on having to give consent to be in a study. Um, she actually apparently asked three different people she knows on institutional review boards, and all three of them said that's that's really weird. Wow. Um, so she basically thinks that the reason they didn't do this is because um, such a like if they actually did have to get ethical ethics review because if anyone. If you, Anybody I know who's ever had to apply for ethics review to do a study, uh, it's really hard to get. You have to jump through a lot of loopholes. There's a lot of levels. It's a lot of work. Um, and she thinks they probably didn't do it because it would have been the st- their study would have been deemed unethical and right. they wouldn't have been allowed to do it. So, mm. yeah. surprise, yeah. So, um, so what they did is these random practitioners, like there's there is 325 different practici- practitioners, delivered a hodgepodge of progesterone administrations that included intramuscular injections of progesterone and oil, oral administration of micronized progesterone, vaginal use of oral micronized progesterone capsules, compounded micronized progesterone vaginal suppositories, progesterone vaginal gel, and progesterone vaginal suppositories. So it wasn't even consistent in how this right, was there's so no, really weird way to yeah. yeah this is not typically how you'd see a, um an actual research <laughs> medical research <laughs> yeah. go on um did they say anything about a control group nope they had no control group um they did lose a significant number of women in follow up meaning that 27% actually just they they just don't want didn't want to be they didn't they couldn't follow them up right lost. that's a huge number of people to lose in a study. yeah a qu- over a quarter of over, your yeah yeah subjects didn't report back yeah um they received there's no there's no demographic information in the study um beyond gestational age mode of delivery of progesterone amount of progesterone administered quote birth defects and gestational age of delivery we don't know maternal age race country pregnancy history smoking history body max index or really anything about these women meaning they couldn't actually you couldn't actually draw any conclusions from the study um so the study she says is no shocker so when you when the patients are given the so you have women who've taken myth myth pristone um uh, and if they don't get the follow-up, it's called misoprostol, uh, a few weeks later, um, then uh, they end up 
carrying the pregnancy to term 25 to 50% of the time. Um, now that's actually a, a known, uh, a known effect. Like if you don't take the follow up drug, you end up 25 to 50% of women will, you will still, will, will still be pregnant and, and have a baby. Mm-hmm. Um, now <laughs> they basically found this when they gave the, um, progesterone, uh, after that first initial drug. So they, what, what, Basically, what's happening is these right wing people are trying to say, "Okay, I can give you this drug. So you, you take you take the first half of the abortion pill regimen, and then you decide, no, no, I don't want to have an abortion. Then you can take this other stuff, and it'll reverse it so that you can, you know, have your baby." Right. Um, the thing is, they just found the same rates of 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 women carrying their pregnancies to term as they would have if they'd done nothing. So right. the current standard of care, if a woman does take the uh, the abortion pill and then decide she wants to actually have it um the the actual center of practice now is to do nothing just don't take the just second don't, pill don't take the second pill and see what happens and this study basically found that it's just as effective as taking this random hormone um <laughs> so this paper adds nothing to what we know and offers no proof that progesterone does anything um the idea apparently is not biologically unsound um but testing it was out of outside of um, internal review board approved protocol without informed consent is unethical. Yeah. Excuse me, unethical. So that's what the article is about. But it, it's what I found interesting as a general takeaway is that there. I mean, if you're not an expert, it's just so hard to know the, what's a real journal article and what's right. not. And it's it's just amazing that that there can be journals, quote unquote, out there that are that are basically just. That are that are not actually there, there's no factors. yeah I mean if if you are in academia it act, which journal you publish and actually especially medicine becomes very very important it, it's very much about pre- prestige of the journal and a lot of people roll their eyes about that like oh it's not fair that you know only certain journals are considered prestigious but in actuality in, when you think of things like this it's like well at least there's there's repu- <laughs> you know yeah pe- there's journals with reputations to uphold yeah. yeah yeah that are reputable so it's like the yeah. difference between getting your story on CBC versus the rebel exactly yeah. i think we've talked about that to some degree before is the pressure to publish in academia mm. and some of these pay to play journals that take advantage of that mm-hmm. and they don't really add anything to the discourse mm-hmm. and they don't yeah. Prove anything. Well, any and sense. it depends on the field. Like medicine is very, very, very competitive. Right. Um, I mean, when I was in astronomy, it, if you had real research that you really did with real data, I mean, you're going to get it published somewhere. I mean, unless it's a total crap piece of crap. I mean, there's you right, know, enough journals right. that it was going to happen. And, if you do yeah, a good medic- study, yeah. then it will work. But in medicine, it, there are so many journals. Um, so it, it's it, it, the prestige of the journal becomes very important. Um, yeah. It should be apparently, because yeah. <laughs> but it's interesting they use the, you know they they use title like, like what did they call this what what is this journal that it was published in called um, issues in law and medicine that doesn't sound like you know what I mean issues in law and yeah medicine. this is this that pseudo like journal blog, that sounds like a blog title but it's you know what I mean it doesn't indicate that it's going to be some super right wing thing right it's just no, yeah. that's you know true. or the American College of Pediatricians that sounds like a totally legitimate thing no yeah. apparently <laughs> it's a group that that is an anti abortion group <laughs> like you know they choose these really innocuous names right. but like cuz they know what they're saying is controversial so yeah anyways well on that note did you know that Rand Paul started basically started his own medical board nice. so he, so he could skip certifications interesting that's just smart yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, there's the quality control for the boards oh, and stuff like that. It's pretty thin. But yeah. All right. Any other thoughts on that particular study? <laughs> I, I feel right. like the conclusion that came out of that is very in, in fitting with the notion of the forced birth uh, choice of term. I said forest birth. Forest. Well, that's you gotta a, go that's into a different the forest. sort of therapy. Yeah. It's, and be there's, one with nature. There's a suicide it's forest, na- and then there's the birth forest. It's all natural. <laughs> it's an all natural. Heaven birth. help you if you get them mixed up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shit! I took a left instead of a right. <laughs> We're in the why wrong they, forest. Why did they have to be across the road from one another? <laughs> Abort. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> wait, let me rephrase. <laughs> rephrase. Wait, which one do I go to? 
And that's the brainstorm signature I was hoping for. That's, uh, <laughs> I just clapped for myself. <laughs> I would clap for you too, Angela. Self high five. Yes. Uh, on that note, we'll move on to Angela's story. Did you give me your story? You did. No, you have your own story. I have my own story. Renee has a different version this of is the an notes. Old, this is an old one. I didn't. Up, I did on my tablet. I didn't up, update the Yours right should one. be from oh, okay. the ground up, groundup.org? Yeah. Okay. The title of the article is How a Journalist Took an Ethical Stand and Risked Her Job. Uh, Natasha Bolognese refused to edit a bogus article and was essentially taken to... It's, uh, it's, it's, this happened in South Africa. And uh, one of their most notorious quackery promoting publications is closing down after okay. 18 years. And um, well, that's good news. One brave journalist by the name of Natasha Bolognese is she has she stood up for evidence based science, which Oot. ultimately led to the end of this art of this uh, publication. So Delene Totten who is the owner, publisher, and editor of Natural Med- Medicine. Um, she's, she's sad because it's, uh, her, her publication is shutting down. Um, but the, the reason that they're shutting down is because Natasha Bolognese, who is a journalism graduate, um, she was a copy editor. Okay. And it's a really important job, and you're not just – tasked with credit, uh, correcting grammar and such, but you're also, uh, oh, that's pretty important. It's, it's really important. It's really important because a comma misplaced <laughs> can totally, it can totally screw up the, the thrust of an article. If you will, I love my parents, Superman and wonder woman. I love my parents, Superman and wonder woman. There you go. Exhibit. Exhibit A. <laughs> Exhibit A. Right. Yeah. Right. So Delene Totten is, she's a special lady and she's been uh, promoting and marketing and selling um, a product called Wavex or Wavex. It's all capitals W A V E X. And it's a small plastic chip, which its manuf- manufacturers and peddler- peddlers claim that. You attach it to your cell phone and other mobile devices to reduce harmful radiation. All right. With probably no connecting links or anything. It's just to stick it on the phone. Well, you it says that you it's for mobile devices, it's a composite chip of seven super superposed layers outside of plastic, inside five layers with silver ink printed circuits, which if they are exposed to the electromagnetic waves Weaken the passing harmful radiation and balance it with the magnetic field of your body, <sighs> according to the marketing material. Right, your, your body doesn't have a magnetic field. It's Wait, total horseshit. It shit. doesn't. <laughs> Actually, your body, every molecule in your body, many molecules in your body. Well, I mean, like water, like hydrogen has a magnetic field. However, on average, they're all pointing in different directions, and they average out to zero. I'm just, but yeah. but like in an MRI, you align them all, right, and then you tweak them, and then that's how you can image things. So you do have magnetic fields in your body, but they're all. But it takes a massive machine to do the thing. Yeah. Well, it's like a really powerful magnet to align yeah. them all, but they're totally yeah. all randomly aligned normally, and you have no net magnetic field. Just saying. Right. So that, technically, you do have a bunch of very small magnetic fields. But the manufacturers <laughs> of this product claim that it's scientifically That's proven. Fair. Yes, of course. When in fact, it's all fruit loopery, according fruit to the loopery. direct word used in this article, which fruit I approve loopery. of. Fruit loopery. Pseudoscience nice. masquerading as science to confuse and convince customers. All research quoted on its website reflect an absence of evidence that the product works. So it basically. Uses scare tactics to scale a, sell a scam products, and I could go into more detail about about the product, but it's just another one of those bullshit uh, products, like that Q ray bracelet, things uh, like that. Wait, 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 wait! Q ray bracelets work. Don't <laughs> no, don't piss me off, Angela. I love you, Lisa, but you're wrong. But what, one person told me one time work. it worked. One time? That's anecdotal, Dave. Yeah. You no, can't. It's... 
real people. No. A statistically significant number of people told me, Angela. <laughs> Define statistically significant. Or the SNFX bomb detector. <laughs> yes, exactly. So Natasha was the copy editor at the time. And she had to edit essentially an article about this WaveX uh, product. And she was sure that it was a scam and she was worried about the effect it would have on the publication if she continued to sell it. So the sale and marketing of this became more intense and Bolognese became increasingly concerned and Totten was using every issue of natural medicine to promote, promote this product. (laughs) So Bolognese sent her an email on the June 14th, 2017 saying to Totten that the research was not peer reviewed and that organizations such as the Australian radiation protection and nuclear safety agency and the U S FTC warned against such devices. So she stressed that the flawed scientific research and negative negativity surrounding this chip and others like it that are sold to a vulnerable and ignorant market, as well as the possibility of being charged with fraud can only have a detrimental, if detrimental effect on you further down the line and detract from your company's credibility. So she, and it goes on to say the role of a good copy editor is vital in journalism. These unsung heroes of the profession, besides seeing to it that grammar is used correctly, also act as watchdogs to prevent libel and defamation creeping into copy. And they often act as quack busters when products are marketed using false claims. Which is interesting to me because there's some magazines that I'm thinking, oh, like, doesn't the copy editor have, there's some, like, bullshit supplements and stuff that you see. Yeah. Anyway. I, but the thing, supplements kind of get a pass in a lot of ca- cases because of the way that they're actually. A lot of people probably buy into it, too. So many. Yeah. But not just that, but there's also, because they're not technically medication or anything to that, that yeah. effect they get. They basically, the only pass they have to get is, are they safe to eat? Right. Yeah. So this email that she sent was ignored, and two weeks later, she received an instruction from Totten to copy edit, quote, at a lengthy pseudoscientific study um, that it worked. And the study was from the Ukraine, and Bolognese refused to perform the instruction because she knew that studies from the Ukraine weren't reliable. Right. Oh. And she explained she could not be held responsible in any way for promoting a product that was potentially fraudulent. And she was correct to doubt the credibility of the study. It could not be taken seriously. Most significantly, the research is done on quail embryos, and therefore study results cannot be satisfactorily related to humans, which, yeah, makes total sense. In fact, rodents are first for use for scientific med- medical research because they closely resemble human biological genetic But behavior. even then you can't just, like, say... I have a rat study. Now yeah. we can use that on humans. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Pass. So the study also concluded that the findings allow recommending WaveX chip as promising a, a, prom, a promising approach to reduce adverse effects of mobile phone radiation for human health. But, but don't you think that um, like cell phone using quails would would actually have benefited from this thing. Like, <laughs> they might not have yes. yeah, but, they, but they weren't reading this magazine. The they embryos? The magazine. They might have wanted to read it, those quails. Like, do saying. the embryos have the means with which to handle a cell phone? Like, could you put them in that scenario and measure radiation? I don't know. Well, they're... they're yeah, I guess, I guess birds don't carry the embryos in their bodies, right. so... I guess it wouldn't really be their mothers using a cell phone. Not necessarily. <laughs> right. They're not mammals. So needless to say, Totten was pissed and threatened Bolognese with disciplinary, disciplinary action if she refused to perform the instruction. Help me show my shit or else. Bullshit uh, study. And uh, so Bolognese said, well, bring it. <laughs> and Good for her. Yeah. <laughs> She was not only trying to protect the public, but ironically, Totten herself. So the press council's ethical code clearly states the media shall not allow commercial, political, personal, or other non-professional considerations to influence or slant reporting. Conflicts of interest must be reported, or must be avoided, I'm sorry. Um, so 
On July 5th of last year, Bolognese was suspended from her work duties with no recourse to self-representation, which in this case amounted to an unfair labor practice with immediate effect pending a disciplinary hearing. And the disciplinary hearing took place at Totten's Totten's lawyer's office. Um, Bolognese represented herself. She had two expert witnesses on call, a media ethicist and an expert in science journalism from Stellenbosch University, as well as an electrical engineer, both witnesses having PhDs. They were very, very well read, obviously. The hearing was confidential, and they can't name the witnesses. Um, So Bolognese had a very strong case. She made some very strong points out of a sense of duty in a role. As a copy editor, she had tried twice to warn Totten of the risks involved with WaveX and how important it was to give the public accurate information. Um, Totten's instruction was not lawful or re- nor reasonable because it requested content on the Ukraine study, non-validated research, which would involve making false and misleading representations to the public. Uh, her third point was that the instruction was also unlawful, be- unlawful because it involved conflict of interest. Not only did Totten sell the product herself, but an advertisement on the product would run alongside mentioning the study without mentioning that numerous other peer-reviewed scientific studies have contradicted the Aki Mango study from Ukraine. Um, the experts made strong points, but the chair completely ignored them. Um, who was this person? Was it working? Were they working for the law office? Like, why was it happening there? I don't know. If they don't mention who who presided over stuff. Sorry, where where was this taking place again? Uh, South Africa. Interesting. And what's the what's the organization? Like, does it is it a newspaper or uh, a magazine? Magazine called Natural Medicine. Is it well known? Um, is, it, is it a reputable? It thing? It was pretty reputable at the time, but it kind of just went went south. Hmm. Um, so in the end, Bolognese was found guilty of insubordination, despite sound evidence produced at the hearing. In the assessment, the chairman said that Ms. Bolognese was appointed as a copy editor. The fact that she has qualifications alluded to or that she performs work other than what she has appointed was appointed for does not absolve her from following the instructions of her employer. <sighs> Ms. Bolognese was not asked to write an article in her own name. She merely had to furnish a summary of a scientific report. Um, so she's basically, yeah, she didn't, she didn't agree with what was instructed of her and she didn't do it. And that is basically the only reason she was found to be an insubordinate. Um, but in the end, um, she's happy that that it can be talked about in the pu- in the public now like she's she's kind of the 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 takeaway is basically that the legal profession doesn't necessarily take into consideration scientific evidence and there's well, there's a recent study in the Stellenbosch Law Review by Dr. Arnold Muller, mathematics expert at Stellenbosch University, severely criticizing our courts of law in the way they deal with forensics, showing the legal, legal fraternity's ignorance about science. So it's kind of a bittersweet article. Uh, mm. The the magazine is done, and I mean, yeah, she was accused of insubordinate. She was found to be insubordinate, and she didn't win her case. Mm. And but in the end, I mean, the magazine isn't. It's pr- not promoting quackery anymore. Right? Yeah, it's a tough balance, I guess. Yeah, but it's interesting that that the legal system in South Africa doesn't really take science into consideration, <laughs> especially since they're so evidence based. Hmm. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I, I can imagine that the legality argument is kind of the dominant force in the dis- decision, by the sounds of it. Where the the whomever it was felt that it was a legal instruction, with, with without concern for what what she considered the ethical require, requirement. Because the ethical requirement isn't a legal requirement; it's, it's a, kind of a set of personal ethics. Well, the journalism ethics, though, 
she was she was operating within the ethics of of being a journalist right mm-hmm. and and it's a copy editor's job is like we already said correct grammar but also let's not get sued for this let's not you know right but she didn't go to a professional association by the sounds of it <coughs> she went to like they had apparently a legal argument well they went to the is there a professional organization for such a thing in South Africa? <laughs> probably this is not. probably yeah. the this is probably the the mechanism and the vehicle they have to to deal I, with this. I, I would mean, think so. That's why they went through it. It might be hard. I mean, that's just it. Is I don't know. I know next to nothing about South Africa. So how they run their how they run their laws? It's a little specific. You, yeah. Well, I mean, and, yeah. so Advocate Piet van Staden was presiding as chairman. So he was the one that made the decision. Okay. Whether and they they reference the uh, South African Press Council okay. and the ethical mm-hmm. code of journa- of what the media is set out to do. Right. Okay. Hmm. Doing, so doing extreme things against your employer's wishes for ethical reasons is always a hard sell, right? I mean, yeah. I'm thinking like if another a more extreme case, even like like somebody like Edward Snowden. Right? She did. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, she did the re- right thing. Yeah. Ethically, yeah. But whether that fits even even their board ethical standards or the legal standards, of course, are going to be just yeah. Always different. going to have trouble. Like if you're, I don't know, you're going against a very large, you know, a much stronger opponent. If you're going against your employer, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. Straight up. So, yeah. Interesting story, though. Yeah, it was very. It was a good read. Thanks, Angela. You're welcome. All right. Mine is, uh, I guess, also sort of interesting. It's from news.com.au. Uh, naturopath Marilyn Bodnar was convicted for her role in the near starvation and endangerment of a baby. She was, uh. <laughs> yeah. she was sentenced to 14 months, uh, including the time she served. She will be in jail for another seven on top of that. And the judge said that her age, uh, play, who she's 62, played a role in the sentencing. I'm not sure that I'm convinced it should have, but that's fine. Yeah, you know, <laughs> apparently a year and change is hard, an old lady. Yeah. But she was uh, convicted of, what was it, aiding and abetting the mother for who didn't provide adequate care for her child. She told the mother who was breastfeeding at the time to give up all foods that weren't raw vegetables, fruit, and seeds because this would cure the child's eczema in 2015. And uh, the the baby boy became sick and started throwing everything up, so she recommended giving him goat's milk, and which the child also threw up. And then... She told her client that the vomiting was good because it purged toxins. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry, what was she? What was her job title? Like, She's a naturopath. Okay. Yeah. So eventually, in May of 2015, the mother took the baby to the hospital <laughs> because he had a fever and a staph infection and weighed around 14 pounds. Oh my God! Which is in the zero percentile for babies in that age group. Which was, I think, eight months at that time. Wow. Yeah, so that's pretty small. Yeah, very small. The uh, Bodnar was acquitted in an earlier case where one of her clients starved to death on an extreme diet. But uh, in this case, in that case, she pled. Gu- in this case, she pled guilty to aiding and bed- abetting. Uh, in the previous case. She was the friend giving advice, not the oh health practitioner applying client care. Yeah. Uh, the judge said, people, who are per- people are perfectly entitled to portray themselves as able to cure illnesses through the placement of crystals on the body, the use of highly diluted solutions, and the eating of activated mm-hmm. almonds. But he also said... Well-intentioned but seriously misguided advice is as 
is, as the facts of this case demonstrate, capable of causing great harm and even death to vulnerable children. So it's interesting. They, this is in Australia, so they have the right to do this stuff, even though they know legally that it causes this level of harm or can cause this level of harm. The uh, child, the judge also said that uh, the child who is now three will need to be regularly assessed in order to to determine if there was any long-term effects from the starvation, like brain damage, perhaps. Poor baby. Yeah. That sucks. I feel like that could fall under failing to provide the necessities of life. Yes, that is actually what it, one of the things in this article said. It's, it's considered failing to provide the necessities of life. Yeah, right there. Direct quote. <laughs> yeah. Of course, this is part, all part of the whole naturopath idea. Like, yeah, that's right. The mother was also charged and given a 14 month suspended jail sentence after pleading guilty to fail for failing to provide for her child. Uh, Bodner was originally charged with recklessly causing grievous bodily harm to the baby boy, but that charge was dropped and she was then charged with aiding and abetting. That the, I can. Sorry, go ahead. Well, does the child still live with his mother? It did not say in the article. Mm-hmm. I would, I would hope not. I feel like that would have something but, to do with the, the, the suspended sentence that they still had to parent, and that's why they got it. Mm-hmm. I imagine if they lost never custody, know. do they have more than that child? Do <laughs> I mean, like, you never know? <laughs> this falls under the whole notion that it's like the natu- the naturopath idea. Is if it's if it's from the earth, it's it's just fine. If it's the thing doing it by itself, it's fine. It's like mm, your baby shouldn't be vomiting that much. Right. That that's not that's not cool. Don't know. It's a pretty bizarre state of affairs when your kid is vomiting so much, and then you go to your naturopath, and they say give them goat's milk. I had a really bad reaction when I was an infant to goat's milk. Is that right? Yeah, and you're not supposed to introduce dairy for a while when a child is born you're not supposed to give them milk right for like external a year not, yeah until they're 12 months yeah hmm. so i don't know it's it's dangerous hmm. it i mean it's yeah it just reminds me of that case in alberta where the, that couple didn't treat yeah. their kid who had meningitis He's and fine. but they have other kids sick. and they had yeah. they've had another child since that kid That's and right. they 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 have them like they're, yeah. they're in their custody well, seems the, like Go ahead, sorry. No, I I was just going to say it seems like a lot of places don't really have the adequate uh, protection. Yeah, protections for children. Well, and also, um, I don't know, maybe Dave can speak to this because he has a social work background. Um, the 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 goal as a social worker when you are dealing with parents that are tr- being good to their kids, the the goal is to you know try and facilitate that while the child is still living in the home you're not you're not just at all costs making sure the kid is okay like a lot of times your hands are essentially tied right as a social worker because you know okay maybe it would be best if the kid lives somewhere else but i mean there's a a big need for foster families to to take kids in um but I don't know. Yeah, a lot of times the system is limited in in what it can achieve, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, you have to, I mean, you have policies and ethical guidelines and all these things, and like you really have to substantiate yeah. um, a claim to remove ch- children from the home. Yeah. And of course, there's limited resources as well. That- yeah. You know, yeah. so it's, um, I mean, obviously, the goal is not to take kids out of homes. Like that's right. That's that's not what people. That's not what social services sets out to do. Um, so, it, it, I mean, I've when I worked, you know, in government agencies. I mean, there's some times when I walk into a home, and I mean, my my bias in everything I see and experience is, yeah, this kid shouldn't be there. Right. But I need to substantiate that with certain claims and stuff. Right. So. Yeah. Um, and maybe the things I think are. You know, not healthy for a kid are are not necessarily fitting of that criteria either. So, 
Right. So yeah. Yeah, it's in it's a it's a hard uh road to hoe, I guess you could say. <laughs> I have to feel I have to say it doesn't seem like it seems like if if your child is vomiting, naturopathy is not the response to it. So maybe you need well, to seek actual medicine. I mean, I I myself will never take my kid to a naturopath because <laughs> they're quacks. But but that's that's the thing that natural medicine they charge you tons of money because it's not covered often. But they'll spend more time and they'll yeah. they'll listen to your complaints. And yeah. Whereas it's really tough to go to a doctor. So there's there's already those people that are reluctant to, to go to a medical clinic and wait for three hours to see a doctor. You know, I don't really get it. Like yeah. I often like I've moved so much I end up having to look for a new doctor every time I move. And you go on rate MDs or whatever and half the reviews are like Doctor so and so just you know, they just didn't seem to be listening to whatever, or their secretary was so rude to me, one out of five, you know, like, and it's like very few about like, I mean, the ones I take seriously are the ones Dr. So-and-so missed this condition that I had and didn't misdiagnose it or this, or caught this thing that I had no idea, you know, and, you know, sent me for testing even what, you know, and and fought for me and blah, blah, blah. But like, it it doesn't seem like people just want to, yeah, they want... They want a therapist. They don't want a doctor. Yeah, they want know? somebody who listens to what they have to say about how they feel right. and says, oh, well, this is what I think that is based on what you've told me. And they want to, they want, a balance, but they like, want comfort, right? Yeah. But, you know, yeah. and, and to an extent that's the doctor's job, but more importantly, it's to diagnose and treat illness, yeah. right? Yeah. Like that's sort of what you want. You I know think, what I'm saying? I think that there was something to be said about the idea that, uh, the way that doctors have always been trained in the past have been to be very detached mm, yeah. and methodical about their way of doing things. So then they go through patients quickly and they don't necessarily get to know you the way you want to get to know your doctor. And Yeah. Yeah. But also you, ha- these people have, I mean, they're humans. They have to live their lives. If, if they get wrapped up That's true. in every patient's shit, I mean, it, you know, if I've worked in health, I work in healthcare and sometimes you go home at the end of the day and you just, you yeah. can't, you can't internalize everybody's problems because sure. if you do, you will not survive. How will you have a career in, you know, I work in cancer care. How will I have a career in cancer care? If every patient that comes through, my heart is breaking for them. Like, like actually, you know, like if I'm, yeah. I mean, of course, I mean, there's a balance. Of course you have to care to some extent and you have to, you know, right. but you, you have to that professional distance is actually something you have to develop because you yeah. you cannot get yeah. that worked up about every little thing. There is you the can. opposite thing though too where there are times where they just don't listen to the symptoms enough and 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 don't don't find the correct diagnosis and then you go to another doctor and they do because they actually listen to them. For like sure, that, yeah. Like that is something that happens too, right? Like Absolutely. Like I think that needs to be acknowledged cuz um Yeah, it's tough, eh? Cuz there there is again, I mean it goes back in my opinion, to a shortage of resources in a lot of ways. That's the yes. problem is it's an, it's a bogged down system. Well, and, and it's know. also based on you get paid per patient. You're getting paid per fi- patient that you see. You're incentivized in to make it faster. You're, you're incentivized to reduce the time that you're seeing each patient. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so if you have 20 questions literally for the doctor and it takes a minute to, to explain the answer in such a way that the patient gets it, that takes a long time. And so you're feeling panicked because you're like, okay, I hope I remember all my questions. I wrote them all down. I brought my medication list, (laughs) this, 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 this. And I mean, before you even see the doctor, you talk to the nurse who pre-types, I mean, in the clinic that I go to, um, the the nurse types up what your complaint is and asks a few general questions so that the doctor has a little bit more information to go on so that they can just, you know, hit the ground running when they get into the exam room and just talk to you but still it just seems so it seems so impersonal it seems so it's just it's because you're going there and you're feeling vulnerable because you have a thing that has been bugging you for a long time and yeah you've already put it off for a few months because you don't want to go through the rigmarole of seeing a doctor because it takes time i mean and i'm just spitballing here i don't know how it would even work but i wonder if there wouldn't be some way to uh pay 
them for their time versus per the patient. Because I think that's that's the thing that needs to happen. I th- but there's a, the, the there's reason it's done the way it's done is too, the right? reason it's done the way it's done is because the government wants to incentivize them to be as efficient as possible right. to try to save healthcare dollars. So yeah. it's, it's a I'm not yeah. saying that's I mean, right now or wrong. We're spending five point three billion to, dollars on healthcare. Right. Like we're we're spending a ton, and and I mean healthcare is probably one of the biggest expenditures in our province for sure. I think it's actually one of the biggest uh, coming up with one of the biggest expenditures in the country. I mean, well, that's understandable though too, right? Like that's when you have a country that pays for healthcare, then you're that's going to be the major one of the yeah. major costs. Well, yeah. because I mean anything from one from because your population base, but two because it doesn't cost her anything. So whereas some of us don't go to the doctor unless it's like holy crap, I broke both my legs. Yeah, there's some that go. Right. I'm I going to the my, doctor because I, I need I, to... <laughs> I stub my toe. Well, and that's the other thing, too, because they've done studies, and it's it's the 5% of people that are using the the medical time 90% of the time. Right, yeah. Some it's of a, those may be needed. I mean, only so right. much of the population has so, some horrible chronic disease. That's or true. Some, yeah. I mean, like yeah, there is, there is that, like yeah. But, but also, and, and instead of being a more... Instead of having a reactive system, having a proactive system, like a preventative system of, you know, okay, let's, let's Regular manage your checkups, like the way dentists almost work, where yeah. you get a six month checkup on schedule and, you know, so that, you, you know, get if you have a cavity, it doesn't and- <laughs> get bigger and you don't have to get a root canal or whatever. And- yeah. But I'd say the dentist system that we have in Canada disincentivizes that right because if you don't have money you are disincentivized from going and paying that 150 bucks or whatever to get your checkup oh, yeah. done right whereas our system in, i mean arguably compared to say the u.s if you're not insured um i you know i'm more likely to go in at an earlier stage of illness and when hopefully things are easier to treat and will be cheaper to treat overall than if i wait till i'm absolutely dying right, right, like, right. Yeah. to be fair though we are we do have a more efficient system than the states that's what i'm saying yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. I'm saying you're more likely to go in if you, if it's, I mean, I'm still like, yeah, I hate going to the doctor and like, I'm like, oh God, I want to go. But like, it's not like, and like, oh God, I don't go and I don't want to pay $200 for a 20 minute visit or whatever. Right. Yeah. I I actually like going to the doctor. I just don't go because I don't want to be like the guy who goes for no good reason. Yeah. Oh, I hate going. (laughs) I mean, I know I need to go to the doctor for, for certain reasons, but. But it's kind of just there's there's so many hurdles, there's there's just a ton of obstacles. Yeah. But I also think that I mean we need to bring the the empathy back into the healthcare system. It's hard because those people are overworked and it's and short staffed, and yeah they're taking a lot of sick days, but they're fucking stressed out. Yeah. So. All right. For everything else, you can check out the show notes at thebrainstormpodcast.com and our website, brainstormblog.net. I'm slowly catching up on show notes on this. I'm also been working, I've also been working on the website so that it's more navigation friendly. It's easy to get around on. So check that out. Uh, thanks to our financial supporters, Zach, the Utah Outcasts, Bassett, Will, Aaron, Daryl, Destin Sucks, Lachlan, Lachlan. <laughs> Destin doesn't suck that much. We're going to get feedback next week. Magnus, Michael, Positively Skeptical, Rob, and Stephanie. If you want to join them and help the show grow, then you can do that at patreon.com slash brainstorm podcast. You can also support us by donating to our GoFundMe for the conference at gofundme.com slash shift dash two dash reason dash conference dash 2018. We got to work on that. <laughs> Or you can go buy some stuff, t-shirts and whatnot at tpublic.com slash stores slash brainstorm dash podcast dash gear. <laughs> yes, I know. That's a million slashes and dashes. <laughs> That's why you go, go to the to show, show notes. notes. <laughs> you can join us every second week when we broadcast live on brainstormradio.net. Our next show is on April 27th and our guest will be Ian Harris, skeptical comedian. Thanks to Kevin and company. I'm sorry I didn't remember everybody's names. Nancy, Nancy, Kristen, Kirsten, 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 and Christina. Christina. There we go. Thank you, all of you, for joining us. 
You can find more of their stuff at leftatthevalley.com. Check out the episode of that show I was on. That's a few months ago now, though. <laughs> I thought they said that wasn't the, their best. Yeah, they didn't say. They did say that that was not their best. Thanks, Dave, for intro music. Thanks to Aaron Rabbi from the Embrace the Void podcast for doing our new intro voiceover. You can find his stuff at voidpod.com. Thanks to Alex Capper Murdoch for doing the voiceover for our ads. Thanks to Jason Kamol for the outro music. You can find his stuff at a lost state of mind dot com. <sighs> All music played is either with permission or under the SoCan license to play. For more information on SoCan, you can check out the music license info page on our website, brainstormblog.net. Remember, remember to give us a rating, write a, th- a thumbs up, or a fave on your podcatcher of choice. Join our Facebook group, like our page, follow us on Twitter, share the show, and spread the word. For live listeners, stick around for the after show. I'll stick around anyway. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else oh, is. I gotta get up earlier than I'd like. So. It's brainstormafterhours.com and listen to the bonus content after it goes patron only. Or before it goes patron only. Thanks for listening and remember, the truth matters. This is an opinion-based podcast. Each person on the podcast is responsible for their own opinions, and those opinions don't necessarily reflect the views of the rest of the panel. Any guests or anyone associated with the people on the podcast, such as spouses, partners, children, other family members, friends, or employers. No one person speaks for the podcast, with the possible exception of Corey, and he doesn't speak for anyone else on the show. The Brainstorm podcast does not represent the views of our sponsors. We just wanted to say thanks to everyone who listens to us, shares the show, gives us a rating on iTunes or Stitcher, or supports us through Patreon and Gumroad. We don't have a lot of interactions with our listeners, but what we have had proves that we attract some of the best people around. Smart, kind, and cool. An audience truly worthy of the titles Hardcore and Woo Free. Thanks for helping us make the world a smarter place. 